who might benefit most from my being God's son today. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. July 4th, 2021. 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Word of the Lord Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
for he sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on today's readings. Today we are given a glimpse of what a prophet is. Ezekiel experiences what his call to be a prophet will entail. The psalmist describes the role of those who are called by God to be servants of the Lord, a role which includes rejection and mockery. St. Paul concludes his second letter to the faithful of Corinth describing how he has been faithful to his calling to be an apostle, announcing the good news, in spite of the hardships he has had to endure. The Gospel presents Jesus returning to his hometown of Nazareth and the failure of the people to recognize his ministry because they think that they know him. Ezekiel's call, like that of most of the Hebrew prophets, comes from the realization that God has inspired him, that is, God has put the Divine Spirit within him. He is to speak to his fellow countryfolk and supposed fellow believers. He is to announce God's message. God warns Ezekiel that he will meet opposition because the people have revolted against God and will not be anxious to have their failings pointed out and then be challenged to change their errant ways. Yet, as Ezekiel is faithful to proclaiming God's word, the people will know that Ezekiel is a prophet of God. The psalm describes two key aspects of one who is called by God to be a servant of the Lord. First, there is a need to keep one's eyes focused on the Lord God. The second, that being faithful to God will result in being held in contempt by those who are acting against the will of God. As St. Paul concludes his epistle to the Corinthian faithful, he focuses on the purpose of his ministry, to announce the revelation of God. To show that he has truly been called to do this and has not chosen this ministry for himself. He describes all that he has endured in the exercise of his ministry, a thorn in the flesh, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints. He, like the Lord Jesus, has asked repeatedly that he would not have to undergo such sufferings. Yet, like Jesus, he has been reassured of God's presence and power in the midst of his sufferings. He, like his master teacher, has accepted the will of God and he has allowed God's strength to shine through his weakness. In the Gospel, Jesus returns to the town of his childhood and early adult life. As he proclaims the word of God to his fellow citizens of Nazareth, they are both impressed and confused by his teaching. They cannot believe that Jesus could be speaking so strongly and powerfully. After all they are his relatives and friends. They remember him working in the carpentry shop. They grew up with him and saw him go through the experiences of youth and young adulthood. Because of these earlier experiences, they think they know him, where he comes from, and they cannot accept that he could be speaking the word of God so intensely. Since they will not listen to his preaching the word, he is not able, with a few minor exceptions, to bring the good news to them through miraculous deeds. Their lack of faith prevents them from being open to the salus, healing, salvation, wholeness brings the role and ministry of prophets have been key elements of God's plan of salvation the Hebrew word for prophet is Nabi it is used some 300 times in the Hebrew scripture Old Testament the word Nabi has the meaning of one called prophets is the word used to translate the Hebrew prophets means one who speaks or on behalf of another obviously 
The prophet is the one called by God to speak on behalf of God. A prophet is not so much a foreteller of the future as a proclaimer of the word of God in the present. In some sense, the prophet is an ambassador, called by God to present God's message to others. The true prophets of old never chose the lifestyle of a prophet. Most actually tried to refuse the calling, because they did not think themselves worthy to proclaim God's message. They probably also knew what the role of prophet included, opposition, rejection, and possibly death at the hands of those who would not listen to God's word. Yet, when God called, the true prophets responded and were empowered by the spirit, Ra, of God. This Ra gave the prophets strength, wisdom, and guidance to announce God's word faithfully and accurately. The prophets experienced real power and authority as the Ra of God blew into them. In his earthly life, Jesus is also fully empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit, Ra. He comes as the one called to speak on behalf of God. He is the Nabi, prophets par excellence. Being one with his Abba Father and the Holy Spirit, he can speak the word of God precisely, authoritatively. Yet, like all prophets, he meets opposition and rejection, first from the people of his childhood home of Nazareth, and eventually from the leaders of his Jewish faith. As a disciple of the Lord Jesus and a member of his body through baptism, I am empowered to share in the prophetic mission of Jesus. I recall the part in the ritual of baptism, when the newly baptized is anointed with oil and told me, he shares in the triple role of Jesus the priest, the prophet, and the king. It is my privilege and obligation to be a part of Jesus' prophetic mission. That does not mean that I am called to see the future or to add to the revelation of God. My prophetic role means that I must be willing to speak up for my relationship with Jesus and his Abba, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. It also implies that I must continue in that relationship through disciplines which include prayer, reading scripture, and other learning experiences. As a member of the prophetic people, we must share what we know about the Lord Jesus. Again, that is not just the intellectual facts, but more importantly the relationship we have with Jesus. The more faithful we are to our relationship with the Lord Jesus, the more likely it will be that we will meet opposition and ridicule. And that rejection and resistance will most probably come from those who know us the most, our family and close acquaintances. They may question us about our living out the good news, the gospel, especially when we fail to walk the talk. They may think that we are being fanatical or extreme in our living out the faith. Yet, like the prophets of old, like Paul, and like Jesus, we must not shy away from our prophetic role. When we make mistakes or fail to live out our prophetic mission, we must be willing to admit our faults and proclaim the strength of the good news of the forgiving Christ who is still strong even when we are weak. We must continually rededicate ourselves to being disciples of Jesus and sharers in his prophetic ministry. We must join with the psalmist today and proclaim, to you, Lord, I lift up my eyes, you, who are enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. So are our eyes on the Lord, our God. He has pity on us. The personal question, Act J. What does me that I share in the prophetic mission of Jesus. My feelings when I think about the fact that I am called to speak God's word to others, even if they ridicule me. Who might benefit most from my being God's spokesperson today? This week? How will I proclaim God's good news to that person, those prayers? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, ever true and faithful. Through your goodness, you have called individuals to be your prophets, to announce your good news to others. We thank you for calling the prophets of old. We are also gratefully for calling us to share in the prophetic mission of your Son, Jesus. Because of our weakness and fear, we have sometimes failed to be responsible in our role. We have chosen not to exercise the privilege and obligation you have given us to be your spokespersons to others especially to those of our own household or community. Have pity on us and strength us to be more committed to our duty as prophetic members of the church.
continue to breathe your Holy Spirit into our lives so that we can faithfully talk and walk the talk as disciples of your Son, Jesus. Enable us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, our Master Teacher. It is in his name that we make this prayer, for he is your Son and our Brother, our Savior and Master Teacher, who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Compiled by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa